What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is PJ and we're going back to back sponsored videos right here because your boy is just getting that paper. So the sponsor of today's video is Baker. Keanu put their stuff up on the screen right here. Um, Baker is spelled with B-V-K-E-R because the kids these days are averse to vowels and V's and X's are, you know, really cool to replace those. So yeah, um, they just sent me their like new synthwave pack and it's freaking massive. It's like. I think it's 1.5 gigabytes, maybe almost like two gigabytes worth of stuff in it. What? There's presets, wave tables uh, for serum, of course. Bruh. Um, they've got like one shots and drums and like the one shots for actually instruments too. They've got loops, they've got MIDI files, they've got a construction kit. So if you just want to like put together a song, it's it's really freaking massive and it's epic. And it's so cool that they sent this to me. Um, I got the chance to play around with it earlier and I think I'm going to try to make a beat with it now. Um, it's really dope. I really liked it. Um, I don't really have any like real critiques of it. I'm not going to go over and play every single sound for you. I'm just going to make something dope. Oh, and we're going to do a synth wave track today or chill wave. I don't know. Something like that last bit I did. So you already know these bad boys got to come back. Oh, and they gave me a discount code for their products. PJ30. That is good for 30% off all bigger products here. It's going to be here. Yeah. So PJ30 on their site baker.com again spelled with the v not an a because they're assholes so before we get into the the creative process of actually making a song i just kind of want to go over like my opinions and everything so as you can see right here is the baker synth wave pack on the side construction kits drum fills drum loops everything i went through everything and um i'm probably just going to use drum one shots and maybe some percussion loops for when we actually put together the drums and i don't i don't think i'm going to actually any use any of the tonal loops or anything like that i want to actually build that myself but from my opinion and everything i mean the construction kit was dope like the songs you put in there crazy the drum fills were epic lots of there were some of them that were like straight up like the rick roll song i love that i might try to use that um the drum loops were awesome the drum shots like the actual drum sa samples themselves are really good i think the only thing that was like kind of lacking was the kicks but i mean there's so many and like i definitely found a lot of them in there that i liked they were like fat and like had a nice low end to it um but besides that drum shots are awesome the fx is dope because this is kind of just like sweeps and stuff definitely going to use that um the serum presets, which we're going to be messing with, these are amazing. Such good synthwave presets. Like, I really liked literally probably like 80% of these, like 80, 85%. So, and I can use them. So, they were awesome. Uh, the wavetables, I didn't get the chance to explore yet. I'm sure they're dope because, I mean, he's using them in these uh, presets. The loops are pretty dope, too. Again, I'm not going to use them in this video, but check it out. I like that one. Oh, that was cool. Uh, so yeah, tonal. Let's go to the tonal shots. These are like the one shots for like actual instruments. So like. I mean, I find all these pretty cool. Actually, a lot of those are pretty inspiring. I might actually use some one shots in the beat as well for like a melody or something. So if I had to say anything about this kit, I would just say it's super dope. If you guys are into synthwave, definitely cop it. And um, I'm just really excited to go into and, and go into it, explore it, and actually make something like crazy at the end. So yeah, let's get to the beat. So as always, I like to start with my chord progression, and I found these this cool preset here called um, Keys Infinity. Sounds like this. Really cool, really wavy. I like the detune, everything of it. It's just very full. It's very inspiring for me to like create on. So one thing I'm just gonna do is again, lots of those old synths had like six voices, or at least you know the Juno did. I always like to keep it to six voices, just so like there's some like stealing action going on. Um, next, I think I just chose D minor and 110 BPM, and I'm just gonna like start. So first things first, whenever like I work in a in a in a key, like let's, so let's say we're in D right now, I like to have my first chord start with that D. It just kind of makes everything flow a little bit better. So. And then what I did right there is I just create a seventh chord. If you remember from the first um, 80s retro tutorial, seventh chords are very prevalent. Lots of these wackier type chords um, that aren't really like t too mainstream in today's music are really popular and, and like 80s type stuff. So we're going to start with the seventh chord. And I kind of like I already know like I'm going to do like a rhythm like where it kind of like cuts off like a little bit of swing right here. So I'm gonna like this, I'm going to create a bass line.
Okay, so we're going to use those as kind of like our little like bottom notes. That doesn't necessarily mean these are going to be the root notes. This is just what I'm hearing in my head to kind of like have the lowest like frequencies in this progression. So now I'm going to build up, see what happens. I'm not a fan of that. That sounds good. And just to give you a little insight so what that is is just an a minor just inverted up i'm just messing around playing around but that's the theory why that works and i think i'm going to like kind of make this a more smoother transition and put the c in here too and of course that's just going to work because it's the same as this note down here so and that sounds fire and now let's actually build up and do an actual uh seventh chord now you'll see right here That doesn't sound good, and that's because this isn't actually a seventh chord. This is, I'm sure there's a, there's a fancy term for it. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't sound good. But we can actually still create a seventh chord right here with a little chromatic transition from the C to the B. And that sounds fire. Now this B is not in the scale, so if we're going to create um, future melodies, like melodies in the future, when we get to this chord and we're making our melody for that, we're pretty much only limited to these four notes. If we try to do anything else crazy with it, it's just not going to sound good. But that's whenever you go outside the scale, just know like you have to like stick to those notes in that chord. So we got this. That's fire. Just another seventh chord over here. I'm feeling like something a little bit like repetitive. Let me see. Maybe like a suspension. A little bit, but I'm not feeling. It needs something high up. Yeah. That's fire. And then let's just try to. A little too bright. Try this. That's fire. So I don't actually know. Again, like lots of this stuff is just kind of like playing around. I can't really explain the theory for everything, but I kind of like how it goes. It's like down, up, down, but then like this comes up. It's just kind of it. It's a create creates a really nice emotion. So basically, yeah, like it's the, just like the last tutorial, what you just want to do is like lots of wacky chords, suspensions. I don't think I really did too much suspensions besides actually in like the upper registers. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna just uh, stop talking and keep working on this. Nine one one. So just like always, once you've got your nice catchy four bar progression, you always want to copy it over, make it into eight bars like I've got here and then change up something in like the last two bars. Sometimes you can only just change it up like in the last bar and sometimes it could just be super minimal. But um, I kind of just got inspired to do something a little bit different and I'm not going to go over like exactly how it does, but this is what it sounds like. So that's how it's going to resolve. And then if you also remember from my last tutorial, lots of the 80s thing against the six voices. So this is kind of like what our right hand would be playing, but our left hand's going to be playing two notes, typically the uh, root and the fifth. So I'm just going to lay those out not right now real quick. So basically all I'm doing is just using control shift, selecting these notes, blah, blah, blah. A lot of them are just the root and the fifth, but in some circumstances, you're just going to probably have to choose wacky notes, you know, like over here. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let me see something like, I want to figure out why this works for you guys. So, okay. So see this D, this D was over here. So this actually used to be an A sharp, um, an A sharp major seventh chord. And then I, of course I transposed that D up there. So that makes this the root and the fifth. Again, let me get these. Ch -ch 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 over here, over here, this, 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 and bring that down. And now we'll have a much fuller chord progression that sounds like this. Fire. 
So it would appear your boy turned the mic off the entire time while doing the drums. So if you guys ever want like a synthwave drum tutorial to make like dope fat synthwave drums, I just hear so many like weak like drums all the time because people aren't using the right amount of compression or like tape saturation or like EQ. You know, just let me know and I could do a tutorial on that. Just uh, leave a comment, you know, do that, do that for me, baby, please. Just leave me a comment. So yeah, so we're going to be in, um, if you just look up here, this is what the drum pattern I came up with was. Let's play it. So it's a really funky uh, drum pattern. All of the sounds, of course, are from uh, the Baker Synthwave pack. Um, the only thing I really had to tweak a lot was this perk loop. I noticed lots of their loops, like the perk loops and stuff, like... If you notice, they're all they all have snares in them, so that kind of like kind of made it tough for me to layer it with another snare. Like, so I had to do some chopping and cutting out the snares and like changing the patterns and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was like my only like big issue about the drums. Besides that, you could hear it; they sound fire. And just a little bit of processing, and you're good to go. So now is typically the part where I'll do the bass line, and I have to say this is probably my favorite bass I've ever used of all time. I like it so much. I don't know if you can just hear how fat that is. It's just such a good bass. Um, it might just become one of my new go-tos in like future productions. So yeah, since we got like some funk vibes going on, I'm thinking we should do like a funky type bass line where it's like one, two, three, pause, and then like go into like the next part and maybe like some like really quick going up like an octave type thing. I'll show you what I mean. So like one, two, three, and we're gonna compose up here just because I see the ghost notes and then we'll bring it down when it's uh needs to be fat. So yeah, so we're gonna go like this, one, two, three, and something and actually I want to get the drums back in and then like over here so that's what I'm talking about that funky thing or like they would like kind of go up an octave really fast on like a bass guitar and then like a little fill over here and then down here again back to the three It's so easy. You just got to stick to the root and the fifth and then just go up octaves and it's fun. And that's the bass line. Let me just play it down here so you guys can get an idea. So yeah, that's fire. Sunglasses had to come off. It was getting a little too hard to see. So basically, I also wanted to kind of take this little time to show you how you can properly do sound selection with presets. So one of the uh, big tip that I like to do is I like to create an ARP that spans multiple octaves, kind of like how I did here. So it's spanning about two octaves. And then I paste it on a bunch of different instruments where I just try different presets to see what actually fits. So for example, I already picked out some ones I like, but I'm just going to go through all these really cool plucks he has in the, in the pack, uh, starting with this one. And we'll just hear what happens. Now I heard a million <laughs> sounds I like right there, so I'm gonna probably go off camera to choose the ones that I wanna use for the beat. This video is getting to be a little long, so for me to explain everything that I do in my process to create it, especially like, I don't know if you guys realize, it's been like, probably like a few hours <laughs> since I started this. You know, these beats take me a while, especially like all the mixing and everything like that. So I actually laid out a little lead right here, and I just wanted to like show you guys what I came up with. Um, it's pretty cool. So one of the things, I, like another little tip I can give you guys is when I just click in leads, um, I always like to click on no, with no grid. So I always like to do no grids. So that way I could slide everything like a little bit slightly off. So that way it's really realistic. I also, when I like the leads, this preset already came perfect in my opinion, like with the mono on, um, and it had the legato and the slides. Like I love, that's too low. Whenever like leads do that, like that's just epic. And, um, yeah, you know, it's pretty, it's just a really good preset and again click in everything and no i like to do little like rolls i like to have some like lines overlap some don't everything's off grid i like to create like a little motif you'll, you'll hear it i'll play it right now
So yeah, that's fire. So after a really long time from when I started this beat, finally got it finished. And I'm gonna play that for you guys right now. So yeah, there you have it. I think the beat came out insane. Uh, I haven't made a beat like this in a while, so that's why it took me so long. But I mean, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Uh, overall, this Baker kit, the Synthwave kit, super fire. Well worth $40. Almost two gigabytes worth of like drums and presets and one shots. Like all this content was just insane. It was just so fun to play around with. And I mean, it just dove deep and just got to practice for hours and doing awesome music. <laughs> 